as a cameraman and a photographer for years, I destroyed the vertebrae in my neck. In 2000, I had spinal surgery, and it left me with a paralyzed arm. Yoga became a vehicle to accept. The handicap turned into a blessing in my life. On this beautiful summer night in August, I had left a class with a yoga mat under my arm, and I bumped into my director of photography from Vanity Fair. I said, you know, I would love to do a portfolio for you on the yoga masters and gurus. And she bit. These are mudras. This is Buddha's way of communicating with us through his hand gesture. What's fascinating about mudra is it conveys a message, it activates the physical parts of the body and then represent other concepts in the ultimate sense of the mudra, which is to communicate with the divine. Chinese medicine looks at it as qi. By doing a mudra, you are directing energy. And you can work on different problems with the body through the use of different finger postures. This one mudra that everybody uses. This is Gyan Mudra. And it is where the forefinger and the thumb are locked together. The thumb would be considered the macrocosm and the forefinger would be the microcosm. And by joining them together, you are joining with the infinite. When the hand changes over the heart to an open hand, as the Buddha is, it's saying, I'm coming in peace. I'm to be trusted. There's nothing to be fearful of. Anjali Mudra, what we call prayer pose. People do it all different ways. Some people do it with their hands open, some people do it, you know, cockeyed. Look at the Dalai Lama's palms are joined and the way the fingertips touch so perfectly and so open that you can actually breathe through spirit in his hands. To me, this represents perfection of meditation. A lot of the yogis would say the mudra is used as a, a method of linking the individual self with the universal self.